Nigeria's President Mamadou Buhari says the military has located and exchanged fire with kidnappers in a forest. This comes after gunmen stormed a school in Kansina and kidnapped about 400 students on Friday. Police and locals say a gang armed with AK-47s stormed a government science high school and abducted the students. Police and the military were still working to determine how many students out of 800 at the school were kidnapped and missing. Attacks by Islamist militants are common in the northeastern parts of the country. And violence and insecurity across Nigeria have enraged citizens, particularly after scores of farmers were killed. Some beheaded by militants in northeast Borno uh, state late last month. Now, the first international aid has arrived in the Tigray region of Ethiopia. The aid provides hope that the barriers are finally being lowered to the area that has been engaged in a bloody conflict since the beginning of last month. News of Africa's Matt Young takes a look. After weeks of delays, the first non-government supply convoy has finally arrived in the Ethiopian city of Makele, signaling a small breakthrough for humanitarian aid since fighting broke out in the region last month. Despite the Ethiopian government saying that they have already defeated the rebel group known as the Tigray People's Liberation Front, security risks have prevented aid organizations from entering the area. The International Red Cross managed to get access to the city of Mekele on Saturday morning, but with just seven trucks worth of aid, they are still well short of helping the nearly one million people displaced by the conflict. We're almost six weeks into the crisis in the Tigray region, the crisis that have left many uh, displaced within the Tigray region, but also outside. Uh, a lot of the social services that should be afforded to the local population is unfortunately hampered, uh, and there we really need to step up uh, the assistance, the support to those vulnerable people, those who didn't choose to fight uh, and will still require our help, our assistance, and namely on the medical front, hospitals and primary healthcare centers are seriously hampered in their delivery of services just because they don't have enough material uh, to cope with growing needs. With around 600,000 people in the Tigray region relying on food parcels even before the fighting broke out, tensions between Ethiopian authorities and international aid organizations have only slowed the progress, with government forces even going so far as firing on one UN team who illegally broke through checkpoints to try and access Mekele and the surrounding areas. They broke two checkpoints to drive hastily to areas where they were not supposed to go, that they were told not to go. So they were left alone when they broke two checkpoints. And then when they were about to break the third one, they were shot at and detained. Now, I'd, of course, they are free. While Saturday's convoy of seven trucks might appear insignificant, both Ethiopian and international organizations will be hoping that it signals the start of real aid to the victims of a conflict that has claimed thousands of lives in under six weeks. For Newsroom Africa on Channel 405, I'm Matt Young. Hi, Matt Young. Thank you tonight. Now, for more on this, I'm joined by Head of Operations of the International Committee of the Red Cross in Addis Ababa, Jeremy England. Jeremy, good evening and thank you very much for your time. Some disturbing reports there, even though we are seeing some trucks now uh, being allowed to, to come in. It's nearly not enough uh, to, to be able to address the situation. Why does the government in Addis Ababa uh, uh, not open to foreigners or uh, foreign aid coming uh, with uh, the relief that is necessary? Um, yeah, good evening, Tabo, and thanks for having us on. Um, it's clear that uh, we've, uh, we're relieved to be able to have delivered one convoy into the capital of Tigray in, in Makili. And uh, we think this is an important start uh, to what will be a long program with many needs to address. It's not an insignificant amount of assistance that's there. More than 400 trauma patients will now be able to be treated. Um, basic medical services that were interrupted for many weeks, uh, leading to a lot of preventable deaths in hospitals uh, in the capital, should now um, be stopped and uh, regular services continue. Uh, it's not enough. We agree that uh, much more must be done. Your report... Um, before mentioned uh, the problems of some aid agencies to go through. Those problems have not been applying uh, in our situation. Our 
work has been very closely coordinated together with the Ethiopian Red Cross and the Ethiopian Ministry of Health. Uh, and uh, once we had a clear plan of action agreed at all levels, we also sought the appropriate security clearances and eventually received those. Um, I don't want to speak on behalf of other agencies or people trying to access other areas of Tigray because each area has its own complications uh, and each um, agency has its own responsibilities to to negotiate and work on their approach. Yeah. What is clear uh, now, is... Now in that, in that report, Jeremy, we, we hear that the, the UN uh, uh, humanitarian aid was actually shot at and uh, the uh, government saying, well, they went past a, a police checkpoint. Do you find that there are places for your agency where the government says you are not allowed to get into here, will bring the aid or whatever relief is, is required there? I think first and foremost, it's important to realize it is the government's responsibility to provide aid to its own population. And the international agencies there are to help uh, supplement and fill the gaps uh, in areas that are required. Our agency has not yet um, been blocked from access. But as I said before, we're not talking about the same areas of Tigray. And uh, we are not yet ready uh, to enter all areas of Tigray. It'll have to be a step-by-step -step process, carefully planned, carefully consulted, carefully cleared in order to go forward. However, we remain an independent agency. We work directly with the authorities concerned. And uh, at this stage, we are confident that we will be able to access step-by-step -step, um, areas that are, need assistance. However, this process is too slow. We agree that more easy access should be provided to all agencies. No single agency, nor the government on its own, will cover all the needs in this crisis and an acceleration of the response is absolutely necessary. Right. Now, we, we're hearing also seeing some reports of the Eritrean forces gaining access to Tigray. Uh, can you confirm that? I cannot confirm that. What I can confirm is that there are essential services that the existing population in all, all the major cities in Tigray require that are not functioning as they should whether that's regular health services, water, power, communications. And when those things uh, drop down, the degree of vulnerability for all, for all the citizens of that area increases. Yeah. You add to that people who may have been injured by this conflict, and then you have um, an almost impossible situation for doctors to make choices about who gets treated and who doesn't. Yeah. So it's very clear that an increase in, in access and an increase in delivery of humanitarian assistance, both by government and by its partners, is essential. This blocking, Jeremy, of international aid, I mean, does it any way indicate and point to the level of tension that is uh, existing currently on the ground? Look, I, I, I really don't want to comment on, on why different actors and government may or may not have reached agreement. What I want to comment on is the need for a collaborative approach from all parties and for an open and transparent approach from all sides in order to get assistance through to those people who are need who are needing it, yeah, um, and that requires also a presence on the ground. Uh, it, people should also realise that there are officers on the ground in different parts of Tigray from different international organisations, and one of the most difficult issues at the moment is simply having communication from those officers to their headquarters in order to clarify what needs to be done, to and how to do it, and then to communicate effectively also with government. Uh, to to agree on those uh, on those priorities. Yeah. Now, aid groups have been warning of a looming uh, hunger crisis uh, in Ethiopia. In your estimation, how far uh, are those people from a complete uh, lack of food? Basically, the the rationing of food that is there right now completely dwindling. It, it's very hard to say with with ac with accuracy because we haven't been able to make any serious assessments across uh, the whole region of Tigray in the last month or six weeks. Uh, and the assessments are just starting in the far west and ourselves in the um, are part of those assessments as well as in Makeli, but in the central part of Tigray, very few assessments have been done. What we do know is that um, this is a period when harvests should be, uh, should be taken in and with the, the level of displacement and conflict, the harvest this year will be uh, severely limited. Secondly, we all know what it's like to be locked down at times of COVID but when you throw into that um, all of the other instability relating to power, water, communications, shops being closed, routes being closed, 
we can see that the population is very rapidly approaching the end of their reserves and their capacity to look after themselves when all of their different um, coping mechanisms uh, are interrupted in this way. So yes, we're extremely worried about food shortages. We're extremely worried about damaged services. And we're extremely worried also about um, uh, you know, household uh, items that people need in order um, to, to collect water, make their food um, and access services. Jeremy, I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us tonight. Jeremy England, who is the head of operations at the International Committee.